Welcome to the Disruptive Social Care Podcast with social care provocateur and social media queen Shirley Ayers and myself, Stuart Arnott, founder of Mindings, a service dedicated to harnessing the power of social media to help alleviate social isolation. In this show, we aim to spread the word about what's going on in the world of disruptive social care, amplify the voices of people with great ideas that few people have heard about, help our communities connect and collaborate, and interview thought leaders across the sector. Well, Shirley, hello. Show number 20 and over 7,000 listens and views of the podcast. Very, very impressive. And, you know, with so much happening, um, one of the biggest challenges is actually deciding what to include in our podcast. What is becoming obvious is that people's social networks are increasingly important channels of learning, trust, influence, and, of course, they are without geographical boundaries. And, you know, all the time I hear... Um, individual stories of how technology and social networks are providing some of the most powerful tools available today for building a sense of belonging and sharing amongst groups of people uh, with similar interests and concerns, which is really, really exciting. Have we reached a tipping point for technology in the care sector? Maybe. Um, And I realise, you know, how much I use the show notes um, as my online Rolodex. And so I am sad that we have not received more support from the many care organisations who actually have a remit to promote innovation and new ways of thinking across the care sector. Maybe people are unaware that we fund these ourselves. I know. I know that you and I put a huge amount of work into the podcast. Uh, Well, over the last year or so, we've been doing it and totally funded it ourselves. So we're talking thousands of pounds and weeks of work. But I know that a lot of people really value what we're doing. So we'll we'll keep it going as long as we can. Absolutely. So, Shirley, what's on the agenda this week? Well, I've actually had to get used to being live streamed across the world. Um, The big plus is that so many conferences now have recordings available online, so if you miss an event, you can catch up later, social learning in action. So this week's show features Citizen 2013, the King's Fund International Congress on Telehealth and Telecare, Care in the Digital Age Conference in collaboration with Kent County Council, the appointment of the first Chief Inspector of Adult Social Care, Understanding the NHS reorganisation in two minutes. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, the Social Work Journal Chat Club, Health and Illness in a Connected World, um, Systems Thinking, Digital Leadership, um, Ways to Get Cool Stuff Done, um, Living Map of Innovators, The Click Guide to Technology, Research and the Challenges of Moving from Thinking to Doing, and The Art of Tweeting. Wow, lots to get through. So let's kick off with Citizen 2013. Okay, well, that, you know, that provided the opportunity for a stimulating and, and at times quite provocative discussion about digital engagement and go- the government services in 2013. Interesting discussion with Alan Rosenbach, who is um, a special policy lead at the Care Quality Commission, about the fact that at Care Quality Com has over 21,000 followers, but only actually follows uh, 215 people. Oh, that's a bad ratio. <laughs> Which just doesn't feel as if the Care Quality Commission really want to listen to the many different people who are concerned about and want to contribute to improving healthcare services. Yeah, social media is about engagement, not broadcasting. Uh, yep, yep. Lessons to be learned, actually, not just by the Care Quality Commission, I have to say. Um, the King's Fund International Congress on Telehealth and Telecare in July was absolutely fascinating because it had a focus on innovation, integration and implementation of services. I learned a lot. And the highlights for me included a presentation from George Crooks at NHS 24 uh, in Scotland. If you always do things the same way and never redesign services, then telehealth will always cost more. And tech is a potential disruptor, but service redesign is key. So the workforce are trying to work around deficiencies in the current structures, which of course include blocking staff from using social media. And it's certainly worth watching the um, recordings and reading the Twitter stream, uh, hashtag KFT13. 
That, that was a really good parallel, actually. Uh, Steve Ballmer this week just announced that he's retiring and a rare tech commentator who's very much, who actually inspired the term disruptive, a chap called Horace Dedieu, uh, for, for the title of the show. And he was saying the problem that Steve Ballmer had is is that this, this lack of realisation that in order to build your business, occasionally you have to destroy the core business and you have to redesign it and build it and move on. And unfortunately, Microsoft has just spent such a long time shoring up and their core business, they haven't been innovating. And, you know, that's, it, it is a big problem, I think, across the health and care sectors. Um, a, a lot of vested interests, um, which, which were challenged amusingly in a, in a very lively panel debate at the King's Fund conference on the pros and cons of telehealth and telecare. Chaired by the, um, chaired by the infamous, or should I say famous, Roy Lilly, um, and along with panel members including Mellow Johnny, I survived what can only be <laughs> described as a baptism of fire. But it was actually very, very entertaining. So um, definitely an experience <laughs> I'd recommend to be part of the Roy Lilly show. <laughs> And uh, and also, I'd like to give a big thank you to um, at Clark Mike, who um, who was there at uh, reporting <coughs> from the King's Fund conference, and generously provided my new Twitter and LinkedIn photos. Oh, notice I'll check that out. <laughs> and of course, in July, a lot of us were contributing to the Kent Care and the Digital Age conference. Such energy and enthusiasm. And it was just really interesting to see what happens when you gather together health care staff, volunteers, service users, carers, to explore how technology can really make a difference and support people to live more independently in their communities. Great event. It worked well. I mean, it was lovely to have you there, Stu. <clears throat> lovely, you know. I mean, everybody, the, the 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 people I I have a lot of regard for. I mean, I was deeply touched that people came from right across the UK to support and contribute to that event. Very very special. And and one of the key messages coming um, through was that professionals need to widen their understanding of the opportunities that exist and let people use technology themselves to complement more traditional health and care support. So it is time for health and social care to catch up and enter the digital age, I think is my key message from Kent DigiCare. And I really like the fact that the first blog about it was written by a service user. And this was followed by a post written by the ever supportive at Who's Shoes. Hello, Jill. <laughs> yeah. um, a unique day. And uh, we're now discussing rolling out the programme across the UK, which is really, really exciting. And happily, a lot of the resources from the day are available online and are being shared widely. So um, I've got them all on my, um, on my blog and we'll provide a link. Now, congratulations are due to Andrea Sutcliffe at Crouch and Tiger, a previous guest on our show and um, currently Chief Executive of the Social Care Institute for Excellence, who has just been appointed by the Care Quality Commission as its first Chief Inspector of Adult Social Care. That's really exciting. thrilled about yeah. that. And of course, Andrea is a stellar example of a tweeting Chief Executive. And I hope her enthusiasm will encourage care colleagues to reflect about the power of digital leadership. Yeah, she'll shake things up. <laughs> I think so. I mean, interestingly, neither Isabel Trowler, who's been appointed as Chief Social Worker for Children, and Anne Hudson, now in post as the Chief Executive of the College of Social Work, um, are using social media. So it's difficult to comment on their potential for digital leadership. Oh yes. I seriously wonder how social work and care can be championed in the digital age if we don't have digital leadership. Um, so just a little observation about assumptions and stereotypes about older people continue. Um, and they do need to be challenged. It's so important to focus on the fact that the ageing population offers so many assets and resources to the community. Wisdom, experience, perspectives and a wide range of skills and knowledge. And I see your knitting grannies are back <laughs> on the telly again. And we are not, we are not going to talk about the doddery old folk in the Wonga advert. We're not. Nope. We are going to move on. Yep. I think so. I think it so. in. <laughs> so, um... Apart from reeling at those appalling ads, um, I think people are also reeling from the NHS reorganisation on the 1st of April, which led to a raft of new organisations. And I'm still not convinced that people really know the difference between Health Watch, Health and Wellbeing Boards and NHS England. Don't ask me, I'll embarrass myself. <laughs> well, solutions here. Follow Clark Mike 
subscribe to his monthly um, e-letter and watch uh, an alternative guide to the new NHS in England, which is a great video animation produced by the King's Fund. Well, Highly will, recommended. Well, that will be good. And delighted to see that one of our favourites, Ermintrude too, has started writing again and sharing her thoughts through the Social Work Journal Club chat, a space for practising social workers and social work students, users, carers, and anyone with an interest in social work and social care, really, to discuss articles and policy documents which are relevant to us all. And the chat runs fortnightly on a Thursday night from 8pm and provides summaries of journal articles, policy documents, which are discussed and analysed. And you can follow on hashtag MSWJCCHAT, Social Work Chat. And, and I imagine, actually, that involvement in the chats probably counts towards um, an individual's CPD requirements. Would imagine. Yes. Um, a really, really interesting um post that um, was signposted uh, via Mike Clark on health and illness in a connected world. And it, and it really, you know, it's sort of raising the bar in terms of um, the online peer support that is available uh, in the digital age. So definitely worth, worth a read. And I love the Healthy Walks Network run by Ramblers GB and Macmillan um, Cancer. Lots of free local easy walks are really, you know, sort of for people to, first of all, you know, help with, with, with social engagement, but also to get fit at the same time. I checked out last night. It's a great resource. It is, isn't it? I love it. Really it. I love good. it. And I recommend the writing of at ST for Girls, who challenge everyday management thinking and sexism. Recent brilliant posts include how to work in partnership, remember the three M's of meetings, keeping a polite distance, keep it unreal, say words like cross-cutting and delivery strands, fill in templates <laughs> and dumb write down. Um, and service users, another great post, I couldn't eat one, which offers a pretty accurate summary of what happens when public sector organisations decide to, in parenthesis, consult with their users. Yeah, I'm definitely a big fan of ST for girls. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's lovely, lovely. Uh, Paul um, Taylor from Bromford put, put me on to them. <laughs> and two excellent posts written um, about the challenges and opportunities of digital leadership from Mike Clark, who shares his top 10 tips um, asking whether a digital leader is any different from a traditional leader. And he suggests some of the likely characteristics of, uh, of digital leaders. An observation made is in the health and care sector, there are currently few people in traditional leadership and management positions in Department of Health, NHS England, CQC, Monitor, Foundation Trusts, local authorities. That could meet any of these 10 points. And you know, and sort of think about how many people from these teams uh, are on Twitter, Facebook, and how many social media initiatives are just given to the comms team. That's the worst thing you could do. Absolutely. Uh, the good news, of course, is that people can and do get inspiration and motivation from others in the UK and elsewhere around the clock. Uh, although this may not align <laughs> with uh, the messages from politicians and policymakers. So even if you dispense um, with the term leadership, I think that care professionals and others are probably looking for leadership traits, which people are inspirational, visionary, um, supportive of ideas and contributions from the workforce, recognising challenges and breaking down barriers. That's the future. Um, and a lovely, um, a lovely post from at Paul Bromford on lessons in digital leadership from South Korea and Uganda. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, and as, he, as he says, really, this isn't about social media. It's not even about the lack of political engagement. It's about what appears to be a digital fault line between local leaders and the communities they represent. So community leaders, however defined, have to embrace this new way of participation and placing themselves at the heart of networks and reaching out to collaborate and even to co-produce new services. The online presence is just a start, a minimum requirement. Establishing a relationship that values more than consultation and the occasional vote is the true challenge. So, highly recommended. Really good post. And there's an interesting synergy between both of the posts on digital leadership and a great post from at Hel Reynolds, our lovely Helen, one of the foremost innovators in digital communications, when she talks about three ways to get cool stuff done quickly at work. A, don't tell anyone, anyone what you're doing. <laughs> B, 
Ask blockers to prepare a business case for why you shouldn't do it. C. Be excited and really care. And for the sake of your health, use your passion and energy on the great ideas, not the good ones. It's fantastic advice, but how depressing is it that in order to get things done in big organisations, people have to subvert the system? Oh, absolutely. I, I mean, it's very interesting, actually. There was, there was a lovely interview with, um, with Helen um, in The Guardian last week uh, where the, the, the dis, Helen described as um, the, uh, the social media guru who makes Monmouthshire rock. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll put a link to that as well. Yes. came out last Friday. Absolutely Fantastic. lovely. And just a mention once again of the Living Map of Aging Innovators at Nesta UK, which provides a guide to some of the most exciting things that are happening in the world of aging. And lots of examples which range from Castro Club, Mindings, yes. um, and through to Project Silverline, which gives smart, free smartphones to older people with simple-to-use apps already loaded um, and enhances their independence. That's currently in Singapore. I'm not entirely sure why we haven't got it in this country because it's a really simple idea. But I'm really pleased that mindings are on there. Yeah. Um, and another living map, of, of this time from Nesta, of job innovators, which is a quick guide, once again, to exciting things happening in the world of job creation and tackling worklessness. And everything from Task Squad matching young people with short-term um, vacancies through to trading times, which matches the skills and availability of local people, for example, carers, with the ad hoc resource needs of local businesses. So really very, very exciting. And, uh, and a mention for the Nominet Trust 100, which will be showcasing the most ex inspiring applications of digital technology um, for social good from around the world. And, you know, I've discussed it with a lot of people about funding. So um, if you want to know who is funding innovation, it may be worth buying the Click Guide to Technology for Adult Care, which lists nine funders. You know, I spend a lot of time encouraging organisations to collaborate, especially in terms of helping people access information. I just imagine, Stu, if there was one place where you could go to find out about all the latest funding and support available to a social business involved in innovation. Just what, great. how good would that be? Um, I remain very concerned about the gap which exists between what is known from research and how it is being applied in practice. Um, and it's just been very helpful to have um, discussions with funders about how we can use the power of social media to share learning and to encourage thoughts about the development of a simple framework which will help organisations to demonstrate the value and social impact of their work. Because I think every organisation just has to do it. And just imagine if every publicly funded organisation also had to do that. Um, how would we rate their services, especially if they're a monopoly provider or a university more used to just publishing research reports than evidencing the impact their research has on frontline practice? So I think this is an ongoing discussion for us, Stu, as you know. So I know you've had um, a busy and exciting few months. So what's going on in the world of mindings? Well, yeah, it's been very busy. The, the core thing that we're doing at the moment is focusing on the, the clinical trial uh, that... Um, that we're involved with, uh, that was uh, organised by Improvement East, who are now folded into the um, East of England Local Government Association, and that's a collaboration of local authorities who are funding this trial and, and gave us some funding uh, to help us develop mindings. Uh, one of the fun things is that so we're already up and running in a, a sheltered housing scheme in Leighton Buzzard, and uh, the local paper got a hold of it, and uh, so I'll have here, I'll put the link on the show notes oh, here, but we have a, a little piece in the local newspaper here about uh, one of the people there who's been connected to her 13 grandchildren who live all over the country. And she, wow. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I can see every day because I get all the stats from it, and I, I know that every day she gets all these pictures and I speak to her, and uh, she, she's a very passionate user, and it was, it was lovely to see her face in the paper uh, telling the story. So that's been really good. So... The next step is that we're gearing up because we're going for the bigger trial now and that's uh, going to be across central Bedfordshire and Cambridge. So there are actually still a few places available. So if there's anybody who has perhaps a friend or a relative who lives in the central Bedfordshire or Cambridgeshire area, if they're over 70 and that you think that 
you know, that they're socially isolated or they could perhaps benefit from, from a service like Mindings, then get in touch with me and I'll put you in touch with appropriate people. As I say, still a couple of places available. And, and of course, we're, we're our engagement with, there's an organisation called Health Enterprise East. And their involvement in the project is they're going to be measuring it. And I know that you're very uh, keen to see things being measured. <laughs> Quite rightly so. But the so, right things being measured. And the right things being measured. So that we're, we're working with them and that's so they're about to, to kick off with that one. Mm, interesting. Now, you know, one of the problems, uh, that, of course, that we're finding out about is uh, the problems of rural internet connections. And that uh, is just, it's just always a problem. So I'm uh, hoping in the next couple of weeks that we'll have actually some announcements about that, about people we'll be teaming up with. But... Um, yeah, it, it continues to be a problem, particularly in, in mm. the areas that we're looking at. There are some quite remote communities, and to my surprise, uh, and, and it turns out that uh, mobile internet isn't the answer either. It's, you know, sometimes we take mm. our internet connections for granted. Um, and at the moment, we're also working with a, a user experience and accessibility company, so they're actually kind of doing an audit about what we're doing, making sure that what we're doing with Mindings, the way the information is presented, is as, as accessible as possible. Okay. Um, so that's that's wow. an, on, an ongoing project. So that's fun. And uh, you mentioned, yeah, I was up in Edinburgh and actually met met up with John Bolton. So I thought I'd give him a shout out. <laughs> of course, the uh, lovely John. <laughs> from, from Focused on Learning. So yeah, we met up in a cafe and they went to play in a play park. How lovely. We did, we did have children with us. <laughs> it was up there, yeah, I was up there for the Edinburgh Festival and it was, uh, it was lovely to meet up with John there. Um, but what I wanted to talk about was, um, this isn't strictly about social care, but I wanted, these are fantastic demonstrations of the power of using social media. Yeah. And I want to give these examples. So uh, on the train on the way in this morning, I discovered that uh, a Kickstarter project that I backed had got its funding. And it's an amazing story about uh, as a, a French female director called Alice Guy Blachet. And basically, she invented narrative storytelling in film. Yet she's been erased from history. She created her own studio. She directed hundreds of films. Yet nobody knows who she is. Uh, uh, Partly, probably because she's a woman. But two passionate filmmakers uh, have been gathering together. They've been restoring material and they're making a documentary about it. And they've been trying to raise $200,000 uh, in order to fund this. And it's it's been an interesting lesson in, in, in fundraising. But it's something I'm very passionate about because, you know, I have a five-year-old daughter and I'd love to yeah. see female role yeah. models for it. But my goodness, they've been using social media well uh, with Twitter and Facebook and, and using YouTube videos, etc. And interesting to see that they started really slowly, but it was in the last week and a half mm. where it started to get some momentum as and it seemed to be that some larger organisations got on board and backed them as yeah. it looked more likely that they were going to succeed. Yes. And that is just, I think that's really interesting. It's getting, the, you should have come in early. Come in early and support yeah. this. And it was, it was, I mean, they literally crossed the line with about 24 hours to go. And it was just, it was an interesting, an interesting Very story. Very impressive. Yeah, uh, it's great. I'm really looking forward to it. It's a really, really exciting project. Um, and similarly, I have a friend, uh, Megan, who... Uh, just my hero at the moment. She has a, uh, was a co-founder of a, an organisation called Let Toys Be Toys. And basically what they are saying to retailers is stop limiting children's imagination and their interest by promoting some toys is only suitable for girls and some toys is only suitable for boys. Um, oh, the worst example I just saw. Somebody put a picture from Fenwick's over the weekend. Fenwick's and Brent Cross. I'm, I'm naming and shaming them. In which they had this picture that was taken and it was... It said girls, girls' toys, and it was a rack of, there was a vacuum cleaner and a toy ironing board and a toy kitchen. It was it was so offensive. I was screaming at it. It was so offensive that that is, you know, I have a daughter. My daughter could be whatever she damn well wants to be. She could be a, an engineer. She could be a national. She could be what she wants. Yet these big companies seem to think that she should be a, aspire to being a housewife. Wearing pink I'm, I'm going to check this out, and I'm, I'm going to so tweet my uh, my disgust at this because you know my granddaughter is um, is six, and once again, I want her to have unlimited ambition, yeah. which is not sort of bounded by a flipping vacuum cleaner, quite frankly. Yeah. So I know it's slightly off topic, but again, oh, using yeah, social media, yeah, using social yeah. media, they use Twitter very well. So yeah. you know they have one other people who spotted us in Fenwick, immediately took a picture, put it on Twitter, yeah. and we all just immediately retweeted it and shamed them. Right. And uh, just the other week, TK Maxx um, got in touch with them and said, um, "Yeah, you're right. 
and they're now mm. changing. Mm. TK Maxx, big big store. They're now going to take down their girls and their boys' signs. Good. On the blog, there was a store called the, um, the Entertainer, which um, just this week have taken down their signs as well. And they've got Good. a big meeting right. this week with a major retailer. And I really encourage you to go into their website, let Toys Be Toys, and sign the petition because mm. every mm. single person who has that petition will, will help their case. So... Uh, a great example of using using social uh, media, absolutely. a lot of lessons that people in social yes. care can learn from these, you know, no disrespect to, to Megan, I think she's a hero, but it's Megan and her friend from the kitchen table and they're, they're bringing major mm. retailers to their knees. Mm. Really proud of her. Impressive. Definitely something to be supported. Let toys be toys. I'm going to sign the petition. <laughs> and I'm going to tweet about it, Stu. <laughs> Thank you for drawing that to me. I my attention. Really, really important. Good. <laughs> so, Shirley, what have we got coming up in the next few months? Well, um, a very busy few months, I think, for both of us, Stu. Uh, and September is off to a great start. I'm attending a Wonk Comms event on the 5th of September, with the very catchy title, rent a quote Think Tanks, Media and Strategy. Uh, and Wontcoms is a very good resource. Um, it's a space for communication staff working within research institutions to share their practical experiences of implementing revolutionary and evolutionary change using digital tools. And they provided that very memorable quote, which I think all event organisers would do well to remember. Audiences' ears are fixed to the speakers, but their eyes are glued to the smartphones. So, I mean, a big challenge for everyone, you know, and you've given some really great examples of using social media. But, you know, how do people gain exposure for policy ideas and analysis um, in the media? And this remains a core activity for most of the think tanks. And media coverage is an essential tool both to reach decision makers and to communicate with new audiences. You know, and journalists realistically reply on think tanks to provide them with concise, well-articulated analysis and perspectives. So questions being explored in this session are very relevant to all organisations that need to communicate. In an era of 24-hour news, poorly resourced journalism and the continued rise of social media, are organisations being strategic enough in planning media interventions? And do too many organisations see um, media coverage as an end in itself? And do digital channels mean organisations can bypass the traditional media coverage approach altogether? So, and a uh, you know, big challenge for all organisations um, to ensure that their ideas continue to have an impact despite very stiff competition and scarce resources in an increasingly digital future. Well, of course, what we did, these projects succeed was by helping create advocates. So yeah. by creating this project, I spent half the weekend tweeting everybody I knew uh, to, to support both that Kickstarter project uh, and let toys be toys. So they, they made me an advocate, and then I know that other people I tweeted to retweeted it, and it's oh, that kind of viral yeah, effect. Absolutely, yes. Um, and, and and we underestimate the power of social media at uh, <laughs> at our peril. And, and another great example of um, of uh, the power of social media to connect is at Social Care Curry. Simple idea, which has really taken off. Um, if you love curry and you love social care, um, then you can join the social care curry meetups. So started by Matt Belcher and supported by George Julian uh, at Social Care Curry is now taking place in 12 venues uh, across the UK and in Vancouver with over 200 people signed up to attend a curry meal on the 5th of September. Um, Paul Taylor and I are going to the London event. Me too. Oh, you're going as well now. Well, this is well, you know, as it were, it's a, it's a very, very yes, interesting, interesting. The promise of a Tarkadal <laughs> would get me anywhere, frankly. <laughs> Well, it is a fascinating, you know, it's really interesting. I mean, there's over 40 people going to the London one um, and a very, very mixed bunch. So I'm really looking forward to it. So great idea. Um, membership is free. Um, the idea is that it will meet quarterly and you buy your own food and drink. 
And the ones, I, I understand some of the venues are actually booked out for the 5th of September and the next ones will take place on the 5th of December. So, and September is Suicide Prevention and Awareness Month. And on September the 10th, the World Health Organization and the International Association for Suicide Prevention will be co-sponsoring World Suicide Prevention Day. You know, suicide has such an impact on entire communities, on families, and it is so important to raise awareness around suicide prevention, a very good use of social media. Yeah, as somebody who was touched by a, by a friend who took their own life, I certainly understand um, the, the shock and reverberations that I can have from families, so uh, it's very worthwhile. Indeed. And coming on to our... Um, our Twitter tips and our Follow Fridays. Um, highly recommended. Twitter tips and the art of tweeting. Do's and don'ts from the very wise at Vala Afshar. And as the fastest growing network, Twitter has, has grown from what started as a basically you know SMS messaging to become one of the most powerful and active social platforms in the world. So it's very helpful to have practical tips and sound advice, including the very basic <laughs> think before you tweet. <laughs> Thank you, Vala. Definitely worth a follow. Um, my own top tip that I do try and put out on a fairly regular basis is about sharing generously your knowledge, passions and links to good posts you have enjoyed reading. Everybody loves a sharer. Please take note. <laughs> um, also, simply retweeting the Good posts get draws you to the attention of that person as well. It's a nice yeah. way to get an introduction yes. to to somebody is by uh, complimenting them by retweeting their posts. Absolutely, I you know, I, and, and I think I mean it's something you know I've discussed with a lot of people um, about the sharing of um, you know what distinguishes someone from being a broadcaster, just talking about themselves, their organisation, the post they've written all the time, to someone who is genuinely engaging and sharing good content. And you, and you really notice the difference between um, the approaches taken by, by people using Twitter, becoming more and more obvious, yeah. those who broadcast, those who engage. Quite fascinating, really. So my, my, my Follow Friday recommendations this week. Um, first of all, at What's the Pont. Um, Chris, who was at Kent Did you care with us, of course, is a thoughtful and analytical writer interested in learning, sharing and better public services. I, I first met Chris in Wales last year and it has been delightful to see his growing confidence as a blogger. And what I particularly like about the posts that Chris writes is that he always provides a useful summary of the key messages and asks, what's the point <laughs> of this post? <laughs> Love it, Chris. Yeah. Thank you. Um, secondly, at Tri Life TV. And Try Life is one of the most exciting drama series available online, which supports young people in making life decisions. And I spent a day on set with Paul Irwin, um, the director recently, and the actors and crew. Uh, the Rough Cut is available online and it is brilliant. Oh. Highly recommended. I didn't know about it. I'll be checking that this afternoon. Um, I mean, they're looking at um, guns, gang crime, um, grooming girls. So it's set. It's pretty. It's hard hitting. It's edgy. It's tough, but um, it has great impact. With um, I mean, co-created with professionals and with young people themselves. So uh, a shout out for Try Life and Paul Irwin. And and finally um, at Ali C three seven five, who also is um, is attending um, London Social Care Curry. Um, a health and social care hellraiser, oh who I'm very much looking forward to meeting. Um, a hellraiser and a provocateur in the same room. <laughs> oh. Whose powerful posts highlight the realities and the consequences when there is no joined up thinking in mental health care and support. And um, what is lovely is seeing people using services getting such um, a growing voice in terms of influencing the way that services are delivered, are commissioned. So um, all credit, and I'm very much looking forward to meeting you, Ali. Absolutely, because particularly in that area, um, when it goes wrong, it goes very badly wrong. Oh, absolutely. And the people in social care get all the blame. Yes, yes. Why didn't you do something sooner? Yes. Well, if you have a look, you'll find out we were trying. But but also, I mean, I think you know, the point that Ali really highlights is the lack of connected 
thinking um, and work between health, social care and housing. Um, and, you know, these are the gaps in the system. These are the disconnects. And actually, that's what everybody's got to work on. Yeah. It's yeah. The services aren't good enough. Yep. Well, um, my follow Friday this week, uh, I mentioned them already. I'm going to give them another mention at Let Toys Be Toys. I don't ask you to do much. We do the show for nothing. I am asking you in return for this week's show, <laughs> go to <laughs> at toy, Let Toys Be Toys and sign the petition. It'll take you seconds and it'll make... Well, it make a big difference for a, for a cause that I'm very passionate about. And uh, I'm bringing Shirley on board now. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, <laughs> yes, me too. Quite agree, quite agree. Well, that's it from us this time. <laughs> oh, I think we got through quite a lot of those. We two. did. Um, we hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please help us spread the word. One thing I would say, actually, I was talking to someone over the weekend and they said what they find interesting about the um, podcast, they always learn at least one new resource, one piece of information. They can guarantee it. That's why they That's why they look at the podcasts. Well, that's good. We'll they, check the show notes then and yes. copy the link and tweet it out. Absolutely. So, um, just, you know, we, we are still, I mean, it's very interesting. You know, our last podcast with, um, with Paul Taylor was done three months ago. People are still watching it. Yeah. Um, they're still downloading the podcast. I mean, there is considerable interest in it. And that's a really, actually, it's a great motivation for us in continuing to do them. We know that they are valued in the sector and the wider sector. Yeah, and quite it's a good one to, to choose, actually. That was a fascinating one. I learned a lot from that. It's a lot, a lot of great information. Yeah. Uh, go to disruptivesocialcare.com and you'll find it still there. Indeed. And, um, of course, our, our, our next interview, I think, will, will be equally... Um, insightful and um, people are going to learn a lot from that so we you know our next guest Dominic Campbell watch out for that one it'll be a cracker <laughs> so you can follow me Minding Stu and you can follow me at Shirley Ayres and go to the website disruptivesocialcare.com where you can see all our previous programmes and importantly the show notes from this programme and also go and like us at our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash disruptivesocialcare until next time until next time bye bye